Hey everyone, welcome back. And we're going to do another video. And uh, hopefully this one will be a, a positive influence for a few people. Uh, this is a request video uh, from a lady who asked about the catalytic extremes that people are having and why they are happening in such great numbers. And I kind of have to get into this video by saying to you, I have to remind people from time to time um, of some things that I've said before. And one thing that I have said repeatedly is just because you have this intense connection with another person does not mean that a relationship is pending. And I do realize that when people have them, uh, because we have in our society the main focus of life in general, for most people, not all people, is at some point to meet the one or the twin flame or the soulmate or the whomever whatever that hits your happy button and tickles your fancy and you fall in love and you, you know, the rest of it, blah, 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 for the rest of your life and all that wonderful stuff. However, what has been happening is a lot of these are not coming together and they're turning into sometimes very dynamic, explosive, uh, and mind-bending, emotional uh, train wrecks, if you will. And people are wondering what the hell is going on. And I do understand that a lot of people don't want to hear about the mechanics of it. All they want to hear is about the relationship aspect between yourself and the other person, and I get it, all right? And I've taken the liberty in the last few days to peruse around uh, through some of the Twin Flame groups on uh, Facebook and take a look at some of the other videos uh, that are up here on YouTube by a lot of other people. And I can see that that's, I can see that that's the general theme that when these connections takes place, that that's what people are promoting and um, giving people in the way of basic information. However, it behooves me to remind people that there's a whole lot more going on here when you have these types of connections, especially when you have a catalytic type of connection that can be very explosive, very life-changing, and in many cases, very, very painful. And I've mentioned before that we are going through a very, very accentuated evolutionary process. So I'm going to try to the best of my ability to explain the catalytic experience and why it may be happening to you, to other people, and why you may go through this two, three, even four or five times with different people and then end up somewhere down the road where you are basically able to have a connection of intensity in varying degrees with other people, be they male or female, depending on what your gender is. And it can be of the same gender and you don't have all of the confusion that's going on initially as you go through the gamut of belief systems, ideologies, philosophies, and ingrained habit patterns that you have been downloaded, templated, impregnated with through your upbringing in your society, your culture, and whatever else. And this is what I'm finding people are having a lot of difficulty with. So <clears throat> the other thing is this. I also understand, again, to be repetitive, that a lot of people don't want to hear anything much more than beyond when is it going to come into a relationship. But there is a time, and the time is now, for people to start taking a look at and understand that I'm a type of person who looks into the mechanics of a situation. I want to know why. And this is all about consciousness and the evolution of consciousness in the human species as a whole. Now, everyone has a state of consciousness. And that state of consciousness is unique to them. How they express their consciousness is through belief systems, ideologies, philosophies, culture, religion, political, 
loyalties and whatever, depending upon their upbringing. This formulates their psychological aspect of themselves or their psyche, if you will. This emanates a state of consciousness, a vibration that is in definition and identifying them as to who they are as an individual, as an entity, as a being, as a frequency, as a radiating signboard, if you will, of a certain energy signal or pattern. And in every person, in every way, there are no two energy signals or patterns or vibration who by definition are exactly alike. We all have variations, all right? In regards to the, the twin flame soulmate thing, there's been, I don't know how many videos put up on, you know, the dynamics of the soulmate, the dynamics of the twin flame, the dynamics of soul twins and twin rays and you name it. And all of them, all right, talk about only the one aspect of it. And that is the two people coming together. What they don't talk about is what we're going to talk about right now, and it's this. As I was saying, when you have this state of consciousness emanating, at some point along the way, now a lot of people may not remember this, they will remember this part. They will remember for the rest of their life <laughs> when they meet another person that hits their happy button. And the happy button happens, and three things take place. One, the heart center chakra usually becomes very, very active because it's personal. It's a personal connection. It is also a connection that is beyond the emotional expression of love, relationship, and sexuality. So the heart center will actually become active. There will be physical symptoms and emotional symptoms of the heart center activation between these two people. Okay? And what happens is they will be complementary to each other vibrationally. Now, what I mean that, what I mean by that, and if you look all the way down the list, is when you see these two people coming together and initially they go into what I've coined very famously as the bubble love phase, which everybody seems to like to use these days, and I'm good with that. I love it. I take it as a compliment. So what happens is when they come together, the evolutionary process activates or stimulates the highest vibration or intention that may be possible with the gift that is being presented to the two individuals. And what happens at the same time, Kundalini energy is usually activated, which is number two. And three, as I said, they go into the bubble of type of situation. And then what happens, they may be in that state for a period of time. Depending upon the condition of the physical body, the emotional stability of the two individuals, it can continue for days. Some places it may be only hours. For some people it may be weeks. And for some it will be months. And in some cases, there may even be, should their connection extend over a period of time, resurgence of what I call the bubble love phase periodically. And that means when that happens that they've actually made some progress. So to explain it a little further, when the actual three aspects take place, how did you get there? All right. How did it actually happen? Look at it this way. It even boggles my mind to think of it, okay, because somebody's going to say, well, God arranged this or the angels arranged it. It had nothing to do with any of that. You actually arranged, okay, and I know this is going to be controversial with some people, but the person that you met, all right, that hits your happy button initially in the beginning and you fall in love and you go through all of the stuff that you go through. Then you come back down to reality. 
And then things start happening between the two of you. It's called the runner. It's called the chaser. It's called the on again, the off again. You arrange this, all right? You. You cannot say, you know, anybody else did it. You arranged it. And you might say, well, I don't agree with you, Mel, but I'll explain that too. Consciously and in timeline, linear, limited consciousness, no, you did not arrange this, all right? At what might be called super consciousness or higher state consciousness, leave out higher self. Higher self is not capable of arranging this. At that much supreme higher state of consciousness beyond higher self, you, as, and I'm going to use the word soul, if I can, which is the ultimate you, the ultimate self, uh, reasonably close to personality, or reasonably close to perfection, but not quite there yet, okay? has sent out a radiation or a signal with all of the composite degrees, all of the aspects, and all of the ingredients of your personality. Call it a personal vibrational resume. And this would happen prior to connecting with the catalyst or whatever you want to call it, all right? How does this happen? Most people are not aware that before they actually feel the actual symptoms of the heart center awakening, which does happen during the course of connecting with the other person. They have what I call preliminary experiences or signal experiences. I had them, and by talking to many people, and one of the things that I do with people is this. I consider every one of these connections so unique, so special, so sacred, that it's not a one-size-fits-all with what all of the, a lot of the information you see up on YouTube. Each individual pair are so unique in the frequency that they have. It's not duplicated by anybody else on the planet. So you can't handle them as a group. Every situation of what's called the twin flame, the soulmate, uh, the divine partnership has to be handled in an individual case by case, person by person, set by set to give them the mechanics of what they're going through and the understanding of what they're going through, of which I'm attempting to do at this particular point in time to the best of my ability, but in general terms, okay? If you want it individualized for you and the other person, then you're gonna to have to talk to me personally, all right? That was a good advertisement, wasn't it? And I didn't even try to do that. Well, what do you know? Because it's true, you will have to. You'll have to find a specialist like me. A twin flame expert will not do it. Okay, you need a specialist. I'm a specialist. Anyway, so you have this catalytic experience, the heart center activated, all right, and you've had the precursor or the preliminary signal experiences prior to this. Now, what this means is, is this, and think about this as I say it. Before the heart center opened, you would have been feeling uneasy. You would have been feeling dissatisfied with life in general. You may have been doing running away from things in your own life that you really didn't want to deal with. You may be unhappy in your career, your job, whatever. You may be feeling itchy and restless and not happy in a relationship that you're in. These are just some and a few of the many symptoms that you could be feeling. And everybody goes through this as they're getting ready for the awakening or the quickening or whatever you want to call it, all right? If you want to, they've got a big fancy word, all right, uh, that they call it uh, up on YouTube. There's a, what do they call the damn thing? I can't, I mean, it's funny, I can't think of it right offhand, but it's this kind of special place and special state of consciousness everybody's going to go, supposedly. Oh, the rapture, that's the word I'm looking for, okay? I can tell you, right now that the rapture's already been here and every one of you that's been in the bubble love phase, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If that's not rapture, I'll eat my shirt, okay? Because the rapture is that powerful and it's not happening per se in mass, it's happening in groups and pockets of people when they're ready for it, not all at one time, okay? So, as you are in this preliminary stage, 
all of these little uncomfortables that are piling up, they're becoming part of your limited timeline consciousness. That's what I'm calling it from now on. Timeline consciousness. As long as you're here in the physical, you are experiencing limited timeline consciousness. And I want you to dwell on that for a moment. Think about that. I'm going to repeat it again. Limited timeline consciousness that is constructed through limited perspectives, ideologies, and philosophies created by others to program you for their behavior and comfort and use. This is why so many of you feel as though like you're prisoners here, that there's some kind of conspiracy going on, all right? There isn't really a conspiracy because all of these people who you think are the ones that are trying to control you, manipulate you, and everything else, this has been going on for centuries. This is just an automatic pattern. It's just like the matrix has been set up and it just keeps rolling along. And it keeps doing the same thing. There's no conspiracy at all. This conspiracy that you think is there was created by us in the first place. It was. We were only intended when we first started coming to this planetary body to come one time. But over the eons of time, what happened is we got addicted to this wonderful place and to all of the really wild and wacky things we could do and get away with and be. And it turned out to be exactly what it is. The wheel keeps turning and people just keep adding stuff to it. So getting back to what I was saying during this preliminary time is when you get the restlessness, you get the anticipation, you get the uh, whatever that you're feeling. Hang on a moment here. I need a Kleenex. Allergies are bothering me a little bit. Excuse me. So what happens is you get this restlessness and it affects the emotional, the mental, and it also affects the etheric. Now when it affects the etheric, this is where it all starts. The etheric kicks in, as it were, because within the etheric body, as I've mentioned, there are additional sheath bodies. These sheath bodies contain the first two or three, if I remember, yeah, the first two or three contain all the template belief systems, ideologies, and philosophies of limited timeline consciousness that are contained within you. The other nine, or eight or nine, and they constitute 12, are potentially what can be templated with new or additional, but the first three layers have to be cleansed and purged. This is called evolution. This is called the elevation of consciousness, whatever term you want to put to it. So at the time that you actually make this connection with, I'm going to call the catalyst initially in the beginning, your heart center is about to activate fully so that you can feel actual physical symptoms of it. It's been active before that, but your consciousness at that point, because of the limitations of which you're feeling restlessness, you're feeling uncomfortable, you're feeling unfulfilled, you're feeling unhappy, has been only just awakening. So it hadn't activated the heart center yet, so it was a pre-signal, as I said. So what happens is you're sending out this frequency, you're sending out this emanation, this radiation, like a signal. Every, every soul body in timeline consciousness has a personal signal that is unique to them. In order for you to grow and evolve through the evolutionary spiritual process, what has to happen is you have to have somebody who at that time, at that time, somewhere on the planet, has the complementary, the complementary aspect to prod, poke, facilitate, stroke, enhance, facilitate, etc., 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 all of the impediments, blockages, programming, belief systems, emotional triggers that can assist you in growing. Nobody ever said that evolution and spiritual awakening was going to be easy, but it can be easier if we begin to understand it's a journey. 
It's a journey of discovery. It's a journey of the enlightenment and enhancement of consciousness producing a rapture-like feeling expressed as consciousness through the heart center chakra in limited timeline consciousness. Now you want to go back and play that one back again because that was a deep and sincere meaning you need to wrap your head around and you need to put your arms around it and give it a hugaboo. A hugaboo. Okay, a hugaboo is when you give yourself a hug, never mind hugging everybody else. It's a hugaboo. Now, even the word sound, isn't that sound titillating? A hugaboo. I'm going to give myself a great big hugaboo. I like it. Let's do it. I'm going to give myself a great big hugaboo. Damn, that felt good. Hugaboo time. You see. All right. Put your hugaboo aside for a moment. <laughs> and understand that the connection that you have with the other person, even when it gets shitty and it's not going well and you're getting frustrated as hell, was a gift for two people at the same time. What you do with the gift, the two of you, is entirely up to you after that. The problem is, when all of this is going on, they didn't give you a manual and say, here you go, Sue, Bob, Dick, Jane, and Harry, and whoever your name is. Turn to page 69, paragraph 3, and you'll find the answer to why it's not working between you and this other person. And you will notice, you will notice in many occasions, all right, that these connections, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does, have a lot, it does happen a lot of time, where you'll make this connection, and this is what I love about the Internet, okay, and people still don't get it. They make these connections with someone from a different culture, a different race, or a different language, as it were, and it's extremely difficult to communicate at best, and they make the connection and they end up in a, some kind of a long-distance ping-pong match kind of thing. And I don't think it ever occurs to them that they ever ask themselves this question. Was, uh, well, why would all of the people on the planet, do I have to pick with someone who's on the other side of the world, comes from a whole different uh, structure, culture, race, uh, race and belief systems and ideologies and philosophies? Why is this happening? And the logical conclusion was, well, because maybe it's the way it's supposed to be, because that's all you can handle at this particular point in time. The idea here is this, is a lot of people are taking these connections, especially when they get a little shitty, and it gets into kind of the he said, she said, and a lot of emotions are being expressed. They get this thing in their head that they're doing something wrong. And, you know, this is... This is not wrong. None of you are doing anything wrong, in that sense. You're just not informed, okay? In a lot of cases, when I'm talking to people, I'll say to them, okay, like, what do, how, have you been, how have you been going at this connection between you and the other person? I said, let me guess, I'll tell you how you're doing it. You're going into it, and the way you're trying to, everybody says it work. Work your way through it. Well, as soon as you say work your way through it, I say, here we go. We've got another casualty here. If you're going to work your way through it, how are you going to do that? You're going to go into your memory. You're going to pick out all of your past experiences about relationship. Whatever you saw on TV, whatever your girlfriend or your guy friend tells you, and you're going to apply that to the situation, and nothing's going to work. All right? Because it has no credence. It has no merit. It has no, no benefit. It's old school. This is new school, you see. So the first thing you need to do, and lesson number one, people, is this. And I've said this before, and you're going to have to learn how to do this. If you don't, it will repeat itself again and again and again. When you are in the catalytic experience and you come back down and you're having all of the problems... Every one of you is taking it personally. 
what the other person is doing or what you're doing to the other person. And that is exactly what you've been taught to do. Do you know why? I'm going to tell you something. Right now, it's really going to go deep. Every one of you that has this evolutionary experience, listen closely. Every one of you, you get to this point, you have no idea what you're doing, and, I'll, and I tell them that. I'll say the two of you are just using all those stuff to try to work through this, aren't you? That's what you're doing. And neither one of you have a goddamn clue what you're doing, to be honest. And a lot of these people are educated, university degrees, CEOs of companies. And that makes it even worse because their egos come into play. And how come I can't work this out? The reason you can't work it out is because you don't have the right information. So if you get lucky, you may bumble across a specialist like me who can take the uniqueness of the situation, profile your personalities, take a look at the little boy and the little girl inside who's wounded and hurt and been trampled on. Everyone is the same. There is no one on this planet who doesn't have a little boy or a little girl inside of them who's hurt, wounded, stepped on, taken advantage of, abused. There are none. There are none. So part of this evolutionary spiritual awakening process is, as I mentioned to you before, to put you through puberty all over again. Somebody says, oh, shit, I get what he's now saying. Yes, Eureka. Spiritual puberty. Your whole personality, your emotional self, is going to be dissolved, as it is now, and a new personality is going to give birth to itself. You're going to be born again. You ever heard of a born-again Christian? Well, you're going to be a a born-again Christian. You're going to be a born-again whatever religion you are. You're going to be born again. I don't care what church you go to, you which, which church you go to, what spiritual teacher that you fall down and, and worship. I don't care what Bible you read. You're all going to go through it. And you're all going to come out different. And a lot of you are going to find yourself in real difficulty with this because some of you have been taught from childhood these things and they're going to cause you great difficulty and this is another reason why people attract to themselves people who come from different cultures and different religions and different belief systems all together there needs to be a cleansing and a purging and sometimes you need somebody who's totally from the other side of the planet in limited state consciousness to be able to facilitate that within you and it can get really difficult and all of this is arranged as i said before by you. You cannot say that God arranged it because God didn't. You cannot say that it's a punishment because it's not. You cannot say you're doing anything wrong because you're not. What you are doing, doing, you are being reborn to your true self, your true identity, your your true state of consciousness through this catalytic experience. And as the gift that keeps on giving, once you made that connection with the person, some things have to happen, and they are happening now, and I'm seeing this all the time. You've gone through that precursor, that pre, pre-signal type of thing, and then when you meet the person, the heart's interactivates, the Kundalini energy starts to move. Now we get a happening going on. But most of you see only the relationship, and positive, wow, hey, playing hide the wiener with this person is like out of the world. That's all you see. That's all you really care about. I get it. And some of you will sit in Facebook groups and twin flame groups, and you'll sit there for years, and you'll blow money on tarot card readers. You go right ahead. You do your thing. In the end, in the end, we're all going to go on the same journey. We're all on the same pathway. How you get there is your choice. How tough or easy it gets is also your choice. It really is. We're all going to the same place. We are. 
don't matter what religion we are, what politics we support, what belief systems we've taken in, we are in limited timeline consciousness. We are now birthing ourselves into unlimited consciousness expression in limited timeline reality. Wrap your head around that one also. Okay. The other thing that takes place is this, and I'm going to explain it this way. Most of you are not aware of this, but the evolutionary process is speeding up. It's accelerated. We have had some individuals who have succeeded in accomplishing a relative, not perfect, reasonably close evolutionary process. They have reached the point where they understand that you can have a communication set up with another person through the heart center chakra, which now has evolved a new personality that has become spiritually mature and now truly understands that there is no such thing as unconditional love. There is only pure source energy. Pure source energy in timeline limited consciousness must have form and shape or something that's tangible you can say, feel, or even touch, and that's another person. Love, as most people say, people don't know what it is. I tell a lot of people that I love them, and they know right away when I say it, that I'm not talking about unconditional love. I'm talking about source expressing freely and simply giving to another with no intention or no expectations asked or returned. And what happens is at the same time, as I'm looking at all of you looking at me, I can do what's called transference. Some of you will have the ears to hear. Some of you will have the eyes to see. Some of you will have the empathic abilities to feel. Those attributes are part of the spiritual process of what's going on. Many of you are at a point where as I'm speaking, you're hearing the words I'm not saying. You're feeling in your heart center a connection with me. That connection is ebbing and flowing like a river or a journey. You are sharing with me. I may never see you in my lifetime. I may never know you. And you may never see me, literally, physically. But we're exchanging information through our journey. I have valuable information that I can transfer to you, which is nonverbal. Verbal communication is the most primitive form of communication in the universe. The best we've achieved so far is what's called telepathy. Telepathy is one step above primitive. Transference is total nonverbal communication energetically from, from unlimited consciousness compressed through an energetic expression, downloaded through the heart center of two individuals that is then transmuted through the hemispheres of the brain of a personality who has reached a level of maturity that can read the book that's been written, feel the book that's been written, sense the book that has been written within themselves of consciousness. This in turn will expand and it will express even more states of consciousness down the road. I'm going to tell you this, my friends, The concept of relationships, sexuality, and love, as we know them, are going to die, literally. We are going to make it. Where we're going to make it first is in the exchange of energy between two people called relationships. Twin flames, soulmates, divine partnerships, all those labels are meaningless. They're just labels in limited timeline consciousness. We're moving into relationships 
that have depth, meaning, sincerity, and honesty. Transference of energy is the beginning of it, where you can step into a person. You can feel what they're feeling, but you don't feel the negativity any longer. You feel only the ones that you connect with at the heart. You communicate with them verbally, you express and share with yourself and give it willingly. For those kinds of things, you must have authenticity. You must have honor. You must have principles. You must have all of the aspects of integrity that go along with it. This means that all of us on our planet have to change. We're not all on the same page. We're not all at the same level. And we're not all equal. We are not. Up here, yes, we are. Down here, we are not. And don't anybody ever think that we are here in limited consciousness equal. We are not. That's going to change. So, the catalyst situation is a vibratory pattern and signal of your limited state of consciousness emanating outward that attracts to itself a complementary being, person, that facilitates a catalytic experience. The catalytic experience includes the bubble of phase as a preliminary opportunity to view, sense, feel, and experience an outcome that is a possibility for the two people. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen with that person. You can experience two, three, whatever in regards to the situation. You may call it whatever label you want. You may defend your belief systems along the way. When you defend your belief systems, your ideologies, and your philosophies, you have no room for vision. You're locked in. That limits your capacity. When that happens in a catalytic experience, the experience is over. It's very difficult to stay open and free and not take personally what another person may be saying and doing. Whenever you see everyone, whenever you see two people in this situation and you see the dynamics, the silliness that's going on, the, the things said, the things done, all this is is a part of your personality going through puberty. It's the little boy or the little girl inside. No matter what your station or title in life is, is meaningless. We're all hurting. We're all wounded. Take a look around you right now on the planet. Take a look at your neighbors. Take a look at the social groups that you're in. Do you know anybody that's not hurting right now? Do you know anybody who's not having family issues? Hmm? Do you? Because the rest of the world is going to shit. That's what it looks like. But it's positive. I'm positive the world's going to shit. And that's exactly where it should be based on limited state of consciousness. It cannot continue the way it is. People say, well, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. We're not going back to that normal. It's done. It's over with. Get over it. The old days are gone. And from these catalytic experiences, if you grow and evolve and it doesn't work, allow it. Allow it to just drift apart. In the meantime, you'll go into a small little cocoon phase for a period of time. Your personality will modify itself. Your psyche will begin to integrate the changes in you that need to take time to evolve and blossom so that shortly after, you will have another experience based on the growth that you've achieved. And then you start to begin to understand that these experiences of the catalytic experience can happen again. And again, you may be even fortunate enough to be in a very meaningful and deep spiritual connection with whatever you want to call your labelized form of it. And suddenly, in this deep and wonderful and spiritual connection, you have a connection with another person outside of yourself, a deep heart center connection with the intensity that may be even stronger than the original person that you're now with. And you're going to say, what the hell's going on? What's going on is 
there may be an issue, a deep core issue within yourself that has not been resolved in your connection. Just because people go into union doesn't mean it's perfect. Don't ever think that. Union is not a perfect situation. It's a situation that is acquired by two people because they've evolved and grown in a reasonable fashion to put them in complementary vibratory equalization. But that doesn't mean it's perfect. Union does not mean perfection. Union just simply means balance of yin-yang between the two. The merge of the energy can ebb and flow between two individuals freely. But there may still be a condition or an issue that may be there that has not been resolved, but it's at a personal level. And it doesn't seem to be able to be resolved in this reasonable union that's taken place. So another person will come along. Does that mean this is another twin plane? No. Does not mean it at all? Does it mean there's another soulmate? No. I mean, to be quite honest with you, some of you are getting ridiculous with your prognostications about what it is. Because you have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, how can somebody flip over a tarot card and suddenly that designates what's going on in somebody's life? And you say, well, I can add in my intuition and my empathic ability. Right. Are you a specialist? Have you done in your lifetime? Thousands upon thousands of readings. I've done thousands of readings over 35 years. I don't even know how many thousands. I've counseled, I don't know how many thousands. I've done Kundalini crisis counseling for I don't know how many thousands. I know how the mechanism works. So I understand what it takes to get there. I understand. So when you get to the point that you and the catalyst drift apart, don't take it personally. You've grown, you've changed. And another one will come along for you at some point. Too many people are boxing, boxing these labels and establishing little churches and belief systems all around them. I, mean, I see this all the time. Don't do this for yourself. Allow yourself the luxury, the privilege and understanding. You've been given the gift of the catalytic experience if that's what it turns out to be. And immediately, I suggest you do this favor to yourself. Once the physical symptoms begin of the heart center awakening, do not assume that this is a sign of a twin flame connection. It's not. It just means that the other person and you have acted as catalyst for each other to activate the heart center as a symptom within the physical body, which means it's now open and functioning. It also means <clears throat> because this person was vibratorily complementary to your vibration and pattern, that it would take that because it's male or female, gender doesn't matter. It's the energetic connection in complementary thing with the personality traits, which are complementary. There's no such thing as a twin flame or soulmate who are compatible and they like everything together. That just doesn't make sense at all. That's a no growth situation and that's the way a teenager would talk all right that's what you talk everybody wants the perfect life everybody wants it to be easy everybody wants it just to all fall into place that's a dream spiritual growth is evolutionary and you must have a complementary energy field that vibrates with the hemispheres of your brain and the radiation that it's putting out and complementary to the chakra lineup, all right? Heart center activation that takes place between the two people accomplishes one thing immediately right in the beginning, what it does. Hook her by crook, and this is why so many people feel physical pain in the body when this heart chakra opens, because you're literally being pulled from limited timeline consciousness to unlimited nonlinear timeline consciousness which is the expression of the heart center. 
So for a great period of time, you go up and down, up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until finally, due to personality growth, maturity, and responsibility of use of your creative gifts and abilities and using them properly, you stabilize in the heart center chakra. Then all you feel is a euphoric glow and emanation for not only yourself. And the one thing that I do want to mention to everybody, and I, and then I'm going to end the video on this point. It behooves me to remind everybody of this. The moment, <clears throat> the moment the heart center goes active in everyone, at this point, it's usually because of another person has stepped in. This is not correct. This is not the way it should be. And it's not going to be the way it is in the future. I want everybody, especially ladies, to remember this. When the heart center activates, the first person, all of that love is for, that emanates from that big, beautiful, glowing heart center energy. It's not your twin flame. It's not your soulmate. It's not your divine partner. That energetic, pure source love is for you. You come first. Everybody else comes second, and that includes your children. Because if you don't love you, if you don't experience love for you, if you don't experience a loving relationship and a healing, nurtured little girl inside, you will never be a good parent. Because the gift that you emanate from yourself is the gift you will give your children. They don't come first, you do. And when you take care of you and you love you, you feel the love for you instead of being so quick to want to be able to have it because it's of somebody else. This is a big lesson we all need to learn on this planet. When the heart center activates, we've been conditioned to see that it has to be another person that evokes that condition in us. This is going to change. In the next four or five years, people will start having active heart centers awaken again, and it will not be because of the prox proximity or the meaning of someone new. That's how much is going to change. We have not learned yet. We have not learned it. We will get there. I'll tell you something. When my heart center activated, when it activated, it was five years after my Kundalini activated. And when mine activated, there was no one else around. I was all by myself. And that's how the story of I fell in love with a styrofoam cup happened. Because I needed to Focus on something. That's where I was at. Mark my words. Soon, we will not have these connections where it's necessary for another person. Because, ladies, you still have it in your head, and guys, you do the same thing. We don't feel yet. We don't feel yet that we can be loved, feel loved, and be loved unless another person facilitates it in us. That's incorrect. That's imbalance. And that will change. Oh, wow. Well, I guess I went overboard on this video. Okay. Well, what can I say? That's the Melvinator for you. Okay. Class is over. Everybody get on with your day. Keep smiling. And know that, hey, when a lot of you don't believe in you do, I believe in everyone. No matter what the condition. The potential is there. So the next time you don't believe in yourself, I believe in you. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.